Our next speaker will be um, Igor German, and he will talk about water, the active medium of circular passage between energy, information, and matter. I think that will interest us all, so go ahead. Please sit down and um, turn off your mobile phones and stop talking. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, so today, uh, first, I would like to thank to Professor Pollack and uh, Germano and other organizers who invited uh, me here and, of course, other presenters and who enabled this very important and interesting conference. I devote this presentation to the memory of Jacques Benveniste, whom I met uh, some 15 years ago and uh, with whom I had very fruitful discussions about the theme that uh, we shall hear today. Um, I'm glad that uh, my presentation is uh, tightly connected to my predecessors as far as the theme goes, in this presentation I would like uh, to show some common thread for uh, various phenomena of uh, water that are not yet recognized by the orthodox uh, science, be it physics or chemistry. <coughs> now, in conventional view of matter, um, so physical or chemical, uh, only two basic levels of water are recognized. Uh, we all know the bulk water stuff substance that we drink or we swim in. And of course, this bulk water should reside on molecular level, uh, where these molecules are regarded as highly dispersed and disordered, and uh, any structure that could be called um, a water cluster or something similar uh, would last only in terms of uh, picoseconds and one picosecond is 10 to minus 12 seconds. I think that nobody in this room can imagine that. Uh, luckily for science, there is another model of water, more advanced um, and uh, it says that besides bulk water and the molecular level of water, we have also the so-called mesoscopic water. Uh, the water level, that means uh, an ordered uh, water um <coughs> level. So it means that water is uh, ordered um, with long range and loss long-lasting dynamics. And these structures, dynamic structures, ordered structures, should be based on coherent oscillations that would yield stability. And we heard quite a lot of this uh, from the presentation of uh, Professor Vitello. Um, we will call this dynamically ordered structures, stable water clusters. Um, and their size is from nano to even uh, micrometers in certain cases. <coughs> even by themselves, water clusters are interesting and speak about the unfinished story of water science. When I say unfinished, I must tell again that uh, um, from the view of uh, the orthodox physical science, um, everything that uh, about water that uh, here is to be uh, found or you know known is already here. So that water is ticked off the list of important research topics that would bring any valuable new insight. But. Um, there is even more to the clusters themselves. Namely, these clusters or domains, you know, or nano associate, there are many names to this mesoscopic level of water. 
may be carriers of the so-called molecular information. In other words, these clusters may emulate various molecules, be them single or in composite forms. <coughs> this is achieved through the so-called imprinting um, and in material science, particularly in crystallography, this process is called heteroepitaxy, or shortly only epitaxy. Um, this epitaxy means that, uh, you know, um, some new layer of crystal is growing on uh, another film or, or basic layer. Uh, it is not ascribed to water because, as I said previously, water is seen only as a very disordered, you know, and dispersed medium. <coughs> it is ascribed to clays and crystals, uh, in and in any case, it means uh, also uh, some memory, uh, as it was taught also previously. <coughs> So we may speak about water epitaxy, which means stable structural transfer or impressing or imprinting uh, some substances into ordered water. This means mesoscopic water, as I described earlier. This means that water may adopt quasi-crystal, quasi crystal-like properties and uh, this is particularly clearly evident with the easy water, as I think uh, most of you should know by this time. Um, and in any way, uh, this water epitaxy means that the structure of certain substance or more substances uh, is imprinted into clusters or domains or the layers somewhat emulating original substance or original layer. <coughs> um, the building of the easy water then may be understood as an epitaxial process, a sort of liquid phase epitaxy, water epitaxy. Um, epitaxy should here stand for the passage from the hydrophilic surface to water hexagons uh, in this, however, it is not about clusters in water, but about very large molecular water layers. <coughs> and uh, it is very important because easy water thus stands as a strong indicator uh, that water is really prone to epitaxy. And if it is prone to epitaxial process, um, you know, uh, with the hydrophilic surfaces, why not in other situations? <coughs> and once again, this is seen as complete nonsense for a vast majority of contemporary natural scientists. <coughs> Water is, as also Professor Vicello told us before, very impressionable agent uh, so either from the surface, like easy water, or from different substances, which is used in homeopathy, but also from various fields, like exemplified in electronic homeopathy, or <laughs> even from organisms. Now, I will uh, explain homeopathic process from this standpoint, um, a little in a little more detail. So we may say that uh, with homeopathic process, um, which we can see as uh, the result of two separate activities of uh, dilution, successive dilution, one against 10 or one against 100, and uh, vigorous shaking, which is called also succussion, in homeopathic practice. <coughs> so in these two processes, uh, which are basic for homeopathy, uh, we come to the entanglement of 
the original molecular structures into water clusters, uh, which may be seen, I think, here. You know, this is the symbol of the water clusters you know, made from water molecules. And this is a molecule of the original uh, substance called also mother tincture. Uh, this is encapsulated, here it is visualized as encapsulated into the water cluster, stable water cluster about which I spoke previously. Uh, so that uh, there the result of this is the mother tincture molecule and stable water cluster coupling that emerge through vigorous shaking. Now in more detail this can be seen like that. So we have this starting molecule with its um, quantum vibrations, molecular vibrations. It is dissolved in water, captured by uh, different uh, clusters. It is then diluted and shaken and through both process we can say that uh, there comes to water epitaxy so to the transference of the dynamic oscillating uh, vibratory structure of this original molecule into the water cluster. So that uh, when uh, by dilution we lose original molecules, uh, this trapped field of the molecules is still present in water clusters or water domains or nano associates. As I told you, various names are in use. Through so that, this vibration field is uh, maintained. Now, through this vigorous shaking, another thing may happen, and this is that uh, uh, these water clusters fall apart uh, so that a sort of propagation of this um, clusters may follow. And this is the reason that we may have uh, potencies or dilutions above the Avogadro number. So this means above the level where, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, even no single molecules of the original substance is left. Uh, and we still have plenty of this uh, water clusters with the entrapped oscillating field of the original molecules. This field may be a little modified. It is not necessarily quite the same field, but as we saw from uh, the lecture and works of Professor Montagnier, it may be quite precise so that the reproduction of this field back to the original molecule can be very, very um, of the same kind. Um, now you see, we have another forum of the so-called non-contact imprinting of substances into water, which I will call non-contact epitaxy. In this case, we have some broadcasting field, general electromagnetic, magnetic, electric, or the combination of them, uh, that connect the original substance, like in homeopathy, and water with water clusters. The difference uh, from homeopathy is that there is a mechanical barrier between these two systems, but they are connected through the oscillating field, which is then the carrier of the molecular vibration from this original substance into the water cluster, and uh, you can see then that the water cluster is now oscillating with the vibration of this molecule, so that we can have these two very different means of impressing water with some molecular field. Uh, this work started with Jack Benvenist, uh, um, and, uh, and now it is practiced by so-called electronic homeopathy, by IC medicals, 
by Professor Montagnier and also at our Bion Institute. So this is uh, the case with IC medicals. You see this general uh, carrier electromagnetic field, then uh, the test tube with the original substance and the test tube with uh, water, for instance, and the transference through these carrier fields from the original substance to this uh, water, for instance. <coughs> And there is another case uh, that uh, this is from our Bauern Institute technology. Uh, we developed um, many such devices. One of them was this one. And the same principle here. So the first test tube with the original substance, the second test tube and the mechanical barrier between and magnetic field. And even very strong electric field was used in this case. This was done some 15 years ago and uh, it was a successful doctoral work uh, um, you know done from this and uh, we use uh, silicates also not only pure water but also silicates because uh, as professor vitiello just told us um, water uh, you know has memory but of short lasting yeah very short. <laughs> now with this calcium silicate, uh, you know, oh, sorry, sorry, um, where am I now? Yeah, here. Uh, calcium silicates, uh, we can stabilize this information. And this is a device that we use uh, today for the same process. Um, there is also a lot of empirical evidence for stable, stable water clusters. So this is not only a theory or a wishful dream, you know, of certain mad quasi-scientists. Um, and this is what I present here is the work of uh, Professor Conovalo. Um, and you see here again through dilution we come to this oscillating water clusters that maintain the, you know, um, original vibration of the molecule. And through uh, consecutive dilutions, you know, we come to, let's say, 10 to minus 10 molar dilution, where there are really no stuff from our standpoint, yet we have uh, not only uh, biological effects from such homeopathic remedy, but what is here very interesting is that we still have certain remnants where there should be none of them. And uh, we can see them through um, atomic force microscopy or even through dynamic-like scattering method using laser light. Uh, what is here also very important to know is that we have a sort of a barrier here, uh, namely up to 10 to minus 7 molar. We uh, get this uh, remnants, you know, these nano associates as they are called by Professor Conovalo, uh, even if this process of mechanical shaking and dilution is shielded from the geomagnetic field or some other magnetic field. While uh, beyond that, so if we want to have 10 to minus 8 molar, you know, uh, dilution, we wouldn't get anything here if uh, the process uh, were shielded from the magnetic field. While if the geomagnetic field or some artificial field is um, in the room, you know, where we are doing the, this, uh, then we still get this. From this we can uh, see or um, infer that this ordering process, you know, uh, needs some magnetic field so that the water clusters uh, really to form and to maintain the vibration, they would need magnetic field. Uh, now, Besides impressing of water, we have also the possibility then uh, to have biological or chemical effects of such 
stored vibration in the water clusters. Um, and uh, even easy water is known to have uh, beneficial effects for health. We, saw, we see that uh, we may imprint also uh, some biologically active substances into water. It is a practice of homeopathy or uh, IC medicals. Um, water clusters emulating these original substance vibrations may have either a similar effect to the original substances, and this can be called uh, the allopathic effect, or they may be challengers with the opposite effect to the original one, and then this is called the homeopathic effect. And uh, I don't know if you know, but modern homeopathy, not the one of uh, Hahnemann, combines these two approaches in one remedy, for instance, so that you can have something for sleeping, some homeopathic remedy for sleeping, uh, done from uh, coffee, yeah, coffee D6, for instance, from coffee, and uh, from uh, uh, valeriana. <coughs> Um, now, let's see how can we visualize the working of an enzyme. Uh, we just heard from uh, <laughs> Professor Vitello that we can have uh, enzyme, you know, in water and that they should work uh, only via water, via oscillating water. And this is true. Now, just imagine that we would have some homeopathic or electronic homeopathic remedy based on an enzyme, digestive enzyme, for instance, for better digestion. Okay, so <coughs> classical biochemistry would say that um, they come together through diffusion uh, with Brownian motion and no order is here. Okay, water is uh, just a barrier, not something that would help this, while well, we heard quite the opposite before that. Uh, so we have the substrate, some substance, an enzyme. This is a so-called key and lock model, and uh, they are put into the material contact uh, by diffusion, by just uh, chance. Um, the product then would follow, you know, and they would diffuse again. You know, this would be the digested food, for instance. Um, we have a more advanced view that was presented just before that, um, and this is the view that, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, it is oscillating. So you see um, where we have the enzyme and the substrate, as it was told uh, previously with uh, DNA polymerase and uh, DNA, for instance, um, one strand of DNA, and this oscillating dipolar coherent field in between uh, that uh, is responsible for the attraction of the substrate to the enzyme. And uh, then through resonance, so they are attracted. And uh, there is a strong theoretical evidence for this. And I think that today in the afternoon, uh, Dr. Leonard Milgram will speak about that uh, uh, using the catalyze uh, system. And uh, this was also empirically found by the work of uh, um, a fantastic chemist, uh, Alexander Rotten, uh, who did a very thorough investigation uh, that uh, the reaction between the enzyme and the substrate, you know, can be achieved even through the film, very uh, thin um, metal uh, layer, you know, one wouldn't believe, but he proved this many times. Um, okay, so you see then uh, through this resonance, uh, we have this catalytic reaction. Now, if we come to this epitaxy, through uh, the consumption of, let's say, some homeopathic remedy started with the digestive enzyme, you know, we have no enzyme here if it is uh, diluted enough, but still we have this water cluster vibrating um, in the same manner as the enzyme, and they are 
attracting actually this um, um, molecule, substrate molecules. They're attracted here, you know, evaporating. And uh, we come through with the same reaction. I think that Professor Vitello spoke very similarly to this before. Uh, and then uh, this is a cliff, and I suppose that the frequencies perhaps change, otherwise it would go forever <laughs> and forever. Um, so this is the model how it can work in homeopathy. A chemical example of this is uh, what was presented by Professor Montagnier. So this is the first part of imprinting the information of DNA fragments into water, into water clusters. So this means they're filled and uh, it should be a very precise imprinting. It is not some, you know, vague imprinting, <coughs> very precise one. I hear myself, huh? Yeah, you hear me, okay. Uh, so here you see this, as it was told, can then be uh, retrieved. I mean, this original DNA goes into water clusters or water domains, coherent water domains, and then this only through vibration, which is um, connected with uh, DNA polymerase, it is then reproduced through polymerase chain reaction, and it was told also by Professor Vitello just before. Uh, so this is again a proof for this. Um, now if we come on the fringe, stable water clusters, uh, nanos, nano satiates, nanoparticles, coherent domains, as they are called uh, in uh, various articles, seems uh, not only to emulate but also to materialize original substances. Uh, so this is a really very interesting challenge for the water science. Um, various authors observe that nanoparticles remains uh, even after long homeopathic succussion process that involves ultra high dilution, so beyond Avogadro, beyond even one molecule is left. Uh, various uh, sophisticated methods were used in this uh, different researches like um, atomic force microscopy, then uh, transmission electron microscopy, and so on and so on. And uh, you may see here these nano satiates that are still left even if we have a very, very high dilution like 200C. 200C is 10 to minus 400 or 30C, this is, uh, you see, 10 to minus 60 um, uh, dilution and so on. This is aurum metallicum, zinc metallicum. These are uh, different homeopathic uh, substances. And uh, these are images, you know, of uh, something that is left after, after evaporation of them. And uh, the chemical analysis showed, at least in certain cases, that they match the original substance when, as I told you, no molecule should have been left. Um, to go on. Uh, so let's see the conclusion of Chikramana research concerning this, and this is valid also for other similar researches. Namely, first, there is a presence of nanoparticles of the static materials and their aggregates even at extremely high dilution, so highly ev beyond Avogadro. Um, the confirmed presence of nanoparticles reaches a plateau at around 6C. This means at 10 to minus 12 dilution potency and beyond. So if we dilute this even much beyond 10 to minus 12 molarity, um, they are not very different either in shape or in size or in concentration. 
concentration is in picograms per milliliter. It is not very much. It is something like, uh, I think that uh, milligram in one ton of water, but still it is something, you know. Um, similar findings uh, came out also from the research of Elia, who will also be a presenter here, uh, and his collaborators. Uh, they found residue of nanoparticles in ultra-pure but succussed, so homeopathically processed, um, sodium chloride, this is our ordinary salt, and you can see, oh, sorry, sorry, um, sorry, this remnants here, um, the photographs of them. Uh, and uh, still on the fringe, um, even much more, is the possibility of transferring epitaxial structures of the whole bacteria uh, by special clays, rather clay called Quelby, uh, from southern Korean scientist, uh, Dr. Gan Wung Bank. Uh, he did many experiments involving uh, this bacteria, and he found that they can start from purely sterilized conditions, um, which was repeated in two laboratories in our country, in Slovenia, at our Institute Bayon and another microbiology laboratory. And you see, we also uh, got colonies or even confluent growth in sterilized conditions. This uh, research is still going on. Uh, okay, this I will not go. So let's see the conclusions. So that water is an epitaxial medium, as evidenced by easy water. Uh, it may emulate various substances. It may receive the structural information for emulation either from the substance itself, in contact with substance, or from an applied general field, like in experiments with um, Benveniste or Montagnier, or IC Medicals, or our institute, and so on. As evidence from various experiments, the informational storage capacity of water epitaxy is enormous. At least large DNA sequences can be stored with high precision. Emulated structures stored in water clusters can be later retrieved, either in organisms or in specially prepared chemical systems. Certain experiments also indicate that res this retrieval may even bring back the original substances. Thank you for attention. <laughs>